Hi, welcome to iDrum Magazine. My name is Jamie Borden from sticklibrary.com. I'm here with the legendary Roy Burns, legendary drummer and entrepreneurial businessman that started Aquarian Accessories over 30 years ago, I hear today, which is a long time. It seems like yesterday to me, and I'm almost embarrassed to say I remember when the company started. I don't remember it well, but I do, I do remember. Roy, thank you for taking time to join us. Great to be here. Um, I've got so much that I want to talk about, and Aquarian, of course, the company and its, its humble beginnings and where you guys are at today is all part of it. But at this point, you're such a historian with all you've done in music and all the people you've played with, and you've done so much in the music industry, um, the talk shows with Merv Griffin and, and the like, and you've done recordings back when editing was not an option, and you had to, to get that first take, and, and chart reading, and big band performances, and all the stuff you've done in your career, and, and, and not small things either, things on a grand level, and that over the course of your career. What is the time period that you remember that most formulated who Roy Burns became? Well, <clears throat> to start in the beginning, <laughs> I met Louis Belson at a drum studio in Kansas City, and he listened to me play, and he said, uh, kid, you're as good as you're going to get if you stay in Kansas. Go to New York or L.A. and study. So two years later, I got on a train with $300 and a drum set, went to New York. I didn't know one person. <clears throat> when I got off the train and looked around at the tall buildings there, I thought, this is a big town, you know. <laughs> so I started studying with Jim Chapin. He took me to this club in the village where they would let uh, various people sit in. So the piano player was Eddie Wilcox from uh, the Jimmy Lunsford band at the tail end of his career, and no bass player. So when I sat in to play, he started smiling because I could play four to the bar in the bass drum. That was feathering the bass drum, they used to call it. Right, right. So this young girl in the audience was noticed that he was smiling. So uh, she went over to him and said, uh, how come you're smiling? I've been in here for six weeks and you haven't smiled at all. He said, it's that young drummer, he knows what to do, because I was playing the bass drum. Mm -hmm. So she came over to where I was sitting after the set and said, you play very well, young man. I said, thanks very much, and I fluffed her off, because I didn't have any money, I didn't have a job, you know, I just got to New York. She says, no, look, I know something about music, I've played music and you play very well. Well, that turned out to be my wife, who's here visiting with us today, we had breakfast with. So uh, the next big event was I get a call from uh, Benny Goodman's manager. He says, if Benny wants to hear you play, can you come to this rehearsal? I said, well, I'm with Woody Herman's band. He said, we know that, but Benny wants to hear you. So I get up to Carnegie Hall Rehearsal Studios. Mel Powell, the great arranger, I didn't know who he was, was playing piano. Benny and myself, and Benny says, let's play Lady Be Good. We play one tune after another for two hours. Nobody says anything. I'm thinking, what the hell is going on, you know? <laughs> and at the end of two hours, he puts the clarinet down, looks at me and says, be at the Waldorf tonight, wear a dark suit, and walked out. I didn't even know where the Waldorf was, you know? <laughs> so uh, I get up there. I did have one suit. It was a dark suit, fortunately. So the band plays a dance set, a concert set, and a dance set. And the manager comes up to me and says, Benny wants you to play the next concert set. So I had to go meet Mousy Alexander, who was the drummer in the band. <clears throat> and he said, don't worry about me, kid. I'm uh, leaving the band. I've given my notice. This is a hell of a way to audition. But I will help you as much as I can. I'll talk you through the charts. So I sight read uh, our concert on his drums with no rehearsal. <laughs> is no, that when you realized that you weren't in Kansas anymore? <laughs> I think you could say that. <laughs> so uh, Mel Powell leaned through the piano and says, congratulations, young man. Mousy Alexander said, you played that show just like I did. He said, you really listen. He said, I hope you get the gig. And uh, uh, I think playing with Benny Goodman was the highlight of my career when I look back. 